Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dechano and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about dynamic arrays in C++, specifically the standard vector class. So now that we're finally beginning to write some code in C++, it's very important that we get accustomed to C++'s standard library, or in this case, something called the standard template library. Now the standard template library is essentially a library filled with containers, container types, right? Things that contain certain data, and it's called the standard template library because you can template it into anything. The whole library is templated, meaning that the underlying data type of the container, so in other words, the data type that the container contains, that is actually up to you to decide. The whole thing's made out of templates, which reminds me, we need to talk about templates, and we will very soon. Templates are a huge topic, so we'll kind of divide it from beginning to advanced kind of templates as we go along. But essentially, all you need to know to use it, you don't need to know anything about templates to actually use the standard template library. All you need to know is that you can provide the underlying data type that this data structure actually handles. And that's pretty cool. It makes it very versatile and it means that you don't have to resort to writing your own data structures or anything like that. So C++ provides us with a class called Vector and that Vector is in the SCD namespace. Now, it's called Vector. That, that's the first problem. Why is it called Vector? Well, there's actually a story behind that. I've linked a, a, like an article or Wikipedia page in the description that will actually talk about that, but uh, it shouldn't be called Vector. It should be called something like ArrayList because that makes a lot more sense. It's essentially a dynamic or, or dynamic array, but not Vector. Vector is a very weird name for this. And a lot of people who first kind of get into C++ really get confused about what on earth this Vector thing is. Is it a mathematical Vector? No. No, it's it's a, it's kind of like a set. It's a set that doesn't enforce any kind of uniqueness to its actual elements. So in other words, it's basically an array, but unlike the normal array types in, in C++, either just raw arrays or the standard array class, which we might, which we actually did mention in the arrays video. If you guys haven't seen that, click up there, but we will probably have a dedicated video about that as well. Um, unlike array, this can actually resize, which means that when you create this vector, when you create this dynamic array, it doesn't have a set size. You can give it a set size and whatever, if you want to initialize it with a certain size, but you basically don't give it a size. You just create this vector or this array, and then you basically just put elements into it. And every time you put an element into it, the size grows. So I can start off not knowing how many elements I actually want in my array, and then just push 10 things into it, and suddenly I have an array with 10 items. Now, to people who kind of are new to programming or new to computer science, you might be like, well, how does that work? How, can, how is it possible to just have an array that resizes? And we're actually going to, over the course of this C++ series, we're actually going to be re rewriting a lot of these data structures that exist in C++ ourselves. And in a lot of cases, we're actually gonna optimize them and make them a lot faster than the ones in the standard template library, because the ones in the standard template library aren't especially fast. That's not really the priority of them. And so in a lot of cases, studios and teams end up actually creating their own container libraries. An example, I work at EA. So an example is we use something called EA STL. There's a link to that in the description below. It's on GitHub. You can look at the source code. Uh, that's one example of, of something that is actually usually in most cases a lot faster than the stuff that's actually in the standard template library. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Um, the point is that uh, the way that standard vectors actually work, we'll talk about that more in more detail in a future video. However, uh, the gist of it is that basically when you exceed the size that it's allocated, so when you make a vector, it might allocate like 10 elements, for example, or enough memory for 10 elements. When you exceed that, it basically creates a new array in memory that's bigger than the first one, copies everything to there, and then deletes the old one. And that way you suddenly just have basically a new array that's somewhere else in memory that has a lot more storage and you can keep adding things to it like that. In practice, it actually tends to allocate quite often and isn't the best performance-wise unless you set it up properly. So this video is just going to be for beginners who don't know what, what this vector thing is, how you can use it and all of that. And then I think the next video after this one, we're actually gonna talk about specifically how we can use this standard vector in an optimal way and that'll kind of get into some more advanced things. So uh, if you wanna check that video out, if you already know how vector works and you don't wanna waste your time watching this video, click on the link right there and that will take you to the advanced, I guess, video and we'll talk about how we can optimize our usage of the vector class. But for now, let's create a dynamic array. So what I've got over here is a basic struct here that's a vertex. This is specifically a vertex position. I should add, as you can see, it's got X, Y, and Z. 
this is just a dummy class. It really could be anything. I've also written an output operator over here just so that we can print this easily to the console. If we were to make an actual static array of this, we would kind of have two choices, right? Ignoring the standard array class, we could just create a static array, which might have five elements in it. But this way we're kind of getting tied to the size. And even if we do allocate it on the heap, like so, you can see that we're kind of still tied to this size and we've kind of allocated five vertices, which means that we can access zero through four. Again, if you're not sure how arrays work, definitely check out that video first but we can access the index zero through four. And then if we try and go higher, we, we run into a problem. And sometimes that's just not good enough because we want to keep adding vertices. For example, we might have a program where we allow the user to enter in data. We don't really want to stop the user after, I don't know, maybe 10 vertices or something and say, sorry, you can't enter anymore. If we want to keep that going, we need a way to say that when you reach the, that max capacity, resize, get bigger, so that you can store more data. Another solution to this problem is kind of allocating an absurd amount of vertices, and then basically just saying that's the hard limit for the program. Anything above that is ridiculous. We're never going to hit that anyway. So basically this program does support unlimited vertices in a way. But of course that's also not ideal because it means that you're using all of that memory. Whereas if, if, if we only have five vertices, that's a huge waste. So what we can do instead is use the vector class. I'm going to include vector over here, and then we're gonna go ahead and make one. So the way that we make one is we type in std vector, then we specify the type. Now this type is just a C++ type of what, what is actually going to be in the array. So in our case, we wanna store vertices. So we'll type in vertex and I'll call this vertices, just like that, and that's it, we're done. Now it's worth noting that unlike languages like Java where you cannot pass primitive types in here, this is a C++ template. So you can pass primitive types in here. I can type int like this or float like that. In Java, we would actually have to use the integer class or something like that. But this is very similar to C sharp as well, where we don't actually have to specify the class type. We can just specify the raw type, the primitive type. So I'm gonna change this back to vertex. Now note that I'm not storing a bunch of pointers to the vertex, to vertex structs, right? I'm actually just storing vertices, just vertex, in just inline. And there's actually a big difference between that. A lot of people tend to ask, should I be storing pointers to heap allocated classes in my vector, or should I be storing just stack allocated, basically inline allocated, like vertex classes or vertex structs? And the answer to that is, it depends. It really does depend. I think I'm gonna make a video in the future that will talk about this specific problem in more detail, because for a lot of people, it's, it is hard to decide whether you should be using like vertex pointers in this case or just vertex objects, right? There's a big difference. The primary consideration is that it is technically more optimal to store vertex objects instead of pointers because if you store vertex objects, your memory is going to be inline. Dynamic arrays are arrays in the sense that their memory is contiguous, which means that it's not fragmented in, in memory, right? It's all just in a row. And if you store vertex objects in line like this, you've literally got one of vertex X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, one after the other. And that's really, really optimal if you actually want to iterate over them and set all of them or change all of them or read all of them or whatever it is that you want to do with them because they're, they're likely going to, well, they are all going to be on the same cache line in that sense. I know I said beginner and I'm already talking about cache lines and stuff. We're going to get into this in the future, but basically uh, you want to try, if it's at all possible, try and allocate them in line like this. The only problem with this is that if it comes time to actually resize the vector, it needs to copy all of that data. And if you happen to have something like a vector of strings uh, and you're going to be resizing that vector often and it does need to reallocate and recopy everything, that could potentially be a very slow operation. Whereas with pointers, the actual memory stays intact because you're just holding pointers to that memory, right? So the actual memory stays intact, but then, um, when it comes time to resize, it just copies those integers, which are the memory addresses to the actual data. And the data is still stored just in various places in memory. So it is, it is a bit of a hard decision and I don't really want to get into it too much now, but that should just give you kind of the gist of this. Try and keep them as objects if, if possible. Um, pointers are kind of always, as with stack allocation and heap allocation, pointers are always kind of your last resort if you really, really need, need to actually do it that way. So now that I've got this, how do I add stuff to it? Well, it's very simple. You just type in vertices.pushback. In other languages, it's called add or add. In C++, the same operation is called pushback. And then you basically push back a vertex. So in this case, I don't have a constructor, but I could just use an initializer list like this to specify my x, y, and z. So I'll say one, two, three. 
and then I'll push another one back and we'll write four, five, six. Okay, pretty basic stuff. Now let's iterate through all of these and print them. So in an array, we don't know, in a, or I should say in a C style array, we don't actually know the size of the array. But in this case, of course, since vector is a full class and everything, we actually do know the size and we can ask it. So let's write a for loop and we'll write i is less than vertices dot size. That's the function that we use for retrieving the size. And then I'll just say stdc out vertices, and then we can use the index operator to access. In Java, we have to use dot get because Java, of course, doesn't have operator overloading, but C++, very much like C sharp, has overloaded the index operator so that we can actually just type it in like that as if it was just any array, which is which is nice. So if we hit a five now to run our code, you can see that we get one, two, three, four, five, six, which is perfect. We can also use range-based for loops with this. So instead of writing all this code, we could rewrite this for loop like this, which is going to look much simpler. We'll just say for vertex v, then colon, then the name of the vector, which is vertices, we can just print v like this. And if we hit F5, you can see that we get the exact same result printing twice. Now in this specific example, because I've written vertex like this, this is actually going to be copying each vertex into the scope of this for loop. We don't wanna do that. We want to avoid copying wherever possible. So if we just stick a simple ampersand over here like this, or maybe even mark it as const, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got the ampersand here to make it a reference, it's not going to copy the data. And if we run this, we will get the same result. However, we're not just needlessly copying vertices. Finally, if we want to clear the list of vertices, we just type in vertices.clear. That will set the array size back to zero. We can also remove vertices individually just by doing vertices.erase. And then with this, now, now I, I just, I love C++ because of this. Look at, look at this. To someone who's new to C++, looking at this actual function signature, it's like, what is going on? And even me right now reading this after so many years, it's like, what's up? I know this is why a lot of people hate C++, not very beginner friendly, but if we, if we read this, it does make sense. Arrays returns a vector iterator, so we can kind of, we can kind of just ignore all that return type. This is the arrays function. Then over here, you can see takes a const iterator. Okay, what that means is that we can't just write arrays two or something like that. We actually have to take in an iterator. Now, if we want to specifically remove, for example, the second element, which is an index one, what we can actually do is take in the beginning of vertices by typing in vertices.begin and then just add one to it. And then that will actually erase that second element. So if we move this for loop down here after the arrays to see what happens, you can see in this case, we do actually erase that second element and everything's great. Another thing that I'll mention is that when you are actually passing these vectors into, into functions or into classes or whatever, you really do want to make sure that you're passing them by reference, okay? If you're not going to be modifying it, then by const reference, just like this. Because by doing that, you're ensuring you're not copying that entire array into this function. So make sure that when you do stuff like this, you actually do pass it by reference like that, okay? Very important stuff. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for a basic overview of the vector class of dynamic arrays in C++ and how you can use them. In the next video, we're going to really get in depth and talk about optimization, about how we can avoid reallocations, how we can avoid copying and all that stuff, and probably some other tips and tricks with vectors in general for people who already kind of get the general premise and want to actually know how they can optimize their code. This way though, the way that I've shown you over here with like push back and just this kind of workflow, that's probably what you'll see most of the time. There's nothing really wrong with it. Vectors specifically aren't that slow usually, but in some cases, of course, we do want to squeeze out just every bit of performance that we possibly can. And that's what the next video is going to be about. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. You can also support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. You'll be able to see videos early, contribute to the planning of videos, as well as some other pretty cool rewards, which you can check out on that site. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.